Hey guys, next up in the Paper Dream printable mini album series is going to be the square envelope album. And um, you do have to do a little bit more planning ahead with this album because you can't just go ahead and make the pages and then insert them into your album you ha or into your covers. Um, you actually have to kind of um, make your covers first and then you have to attach your... your um, your square envelope slightly different so you do have to plan a little bit more on this one so I am going to make two pages with this album and I've already made the cover which is right here and I made it exactly like I made this album cover um, I will link this in the description box below this is just the way I chose to make this one. You can make it in any of the ways, you know, that I've showed you how to make the covers for these albums, but that's what I did. Um, I made it with um, black chipboard, as you can see, and then I covered the whole thing with craft cardstock, and I wanted to tell you about that, too. So let me just tell you first what pages you're going to need to print off. You're going to need four of page number 10, which is this page right here. So it's one, the first part of the square envelope and the wrap. Then you're going to need four of page number 11, which is right here, and this is the second part of the square envelope. Now, this part you're, don't, you're not going to need, so you can either put this in your sleeve, or you can do what I did, and I used this part to cover the black chipboard uh, of my album. So I just went edge to edge and covered it. Actually, I left a little bit right here so I could show you. So I just covered it. Can you see? Just covered the black chipboard edge to edge with the uh, craft cardstock, the leftover craft cardstock. Um, so yeah, so you need four of those, and then you will need two of page number six. This one right here. <laughs> Two of page number six, and um, it's the mini square envelope and the diagonal pocket. So I'm going to show you a way to modify this diagonal pocket to work in this album, and then we're going to be using the mini square envelope as a closure on the wrap, and I'll show you all of that. Um, I did want to apologize to you right, right up front. I am not feeling well. I have been having an allergy attack, so I'm going to have to do some heavy editing in this video. Um, I've been sneezing and sniffling and coughing, and I just sound horrible. Um, so just bear with me, and I apologize if I sound weird. Um, and bear with this video because it may be, um, I might have to <laughs> do a little chopping of some stuff if I sneeze or whatever, or cough. So um, anyways, so those are the pages you're going to need to print out. And then you're going to have to go ahead and make your covers uh, first off. So if you're going to make my exact album, you're just going to be using uh, two pages, and I'm using the half an inch binding for the square envelope. Oh, I guess I could have told you where the, where the covers were. The covers for the square envelope are on page 50, and the spines are on page 50, 51, and the bindings are on page 52. So all that information is in your guidebook, so don't forget. I did want to tell you this is the paper line I'm using. It's a new one from Prima, and I'm pretty sure it's called Rosie Bell. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it's called. I'm, my, I, my vision's a little <laughs> bit wonky right now because of my allergies as well. But it's just really pretty paper. Isn't it pretty? I was going to use, let me show you what I was going to use. I was going to use Romance Novel um, by Prima. Marion Smith designed the Romance Novel line. And this you can still get at Hobby Lobby, and it's only $5.99. So I'll use this in my next um, album. That's what I'll do. Okay, so I've got the 6x6, six six, the 4x6, six, the 3x4, and the 12x12. 12 12. So I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to use. Um, I think I'm going to save the 12x12 12 12 for something else, but I think I'm just going to use the three um, smaller pads. But I just wanted to show you. So I'm using Craft Cardstock, which is, this one is from the Paper Studio Hobby Lobby brand. Um, I just went out and bought some of my favorite favorite, which is Recollections, but I wanted to go ahead and use this while I had it out. And then I'm also using black cardstock as the secondary mat. Um, it's also Paper Studio. Um, it's really soft, though. Remember, I didn't like using it for the binding. So, but anyway, it'd be perfect for mats. So that's the color combination I'm going to use with this paper line. It's so pretty. I think they came out with this paper line at the wrong time of year. I think it should have been more towards, you know, February because it's a really soft, romantic 
feel to it. So, so this is what we're going to be doing. This is my prototype, my mock-up of this album. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you can see, but I did one with uh, out the secondary mats and one with the secondary mats, and it's the same paper exactly on both, just to show you know the difference. I was going to finish it and show you guys this way, but um, I'm going to make a new one. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to make the uh, envelopes and the you know attaching them onto your binding and then how to do the wrap with the mini envelope um, and having the envelope line the actual album covers. So let's start with the pages. This is page number 10 and page number 11. This is the second part, page number 11. You remember I used the other part to cover my covers. <laughs> so um, uh, this is already trimmed out and then I've already trimmed out this one which is this part of page number 10. Okay. So for the pages, you don't need um, the wrap. So I just wanted to show you real quick. This is a Martha Stewart scoreboard and a Martha Stewart bone folder. So you just go and score all of those marks and then you score this one here. Just like that. And then you just fold it over and prep it. Fold it over and prep it. Just like that. And then you want to use some strong adhesive on here. Double-sided tape is what I like to use, but you can use whatever you want. This is um, score tape. And this just happens to be what I have as well. I know a lot of you guys have mentioned other good stuff. This just happens to be what I have, and I haven't been able to shop. I've been sick like all weekend, I'm just not feeling good. Even my nails are neglected right now. They need, they de they're in desperate need of some attention. I just can't. My allergies are too bad. <laughs> okay, so then you want to flip it over, and I'm going to go ahead and tack the bottom of the envelope down. Just like that. Okay, and then you want to ink it. Oh, I have the wrong ink. Um, oh, a lot of you have been asking what this is. What is this tray that I've got my ink pad and ink sitting on? Well, my son, I'll explain in just a second. <laughs> You'll understand in just a second. He had to buy a new one. He, um, he for his phone, he has this like, um, what's it called? A shatter guard, a tempered glass screen guard. It's just like a screen protector, but it's like glass. I don't know. Anyway, so he had to buy another one. Actually, it's actually at Hobby Lobby. That's where he found it to begin with. And um, I, I salvaged the plastic part from the recycling, and it was, it's like two pieces, just like that. So that's all it is. It's just the, like, here's my, um, there is my YouTube black ink. And then there is my blender, blending tool. So that way I can just move it around and I don't have to, normally, I would stick my blending tool right on top of the ink pad. See which one you like better. This one, this one, this one. This. Yeah, me too. So I've got a YouTube ink pad just for you guys. Uh, anyway, so that's all it was. That's all it is, is a screen protector. I just saved the plastic case that it came in and that's it so I just wanted to share that with you guys because you guys have been asking me that and it's really and actually does make it nice to like move it around under the table you got both things right there with you okay moving on <laughs> so anyway back to what I was doing um, then you need to ink your edges so I need to get a new um, a new blending foam. This is Archival Ink in Jet Black by Ranger. So you ink all your edges. You will see all sides of this. Um, so you want to get on the inside too, just to a certain point because you know your pocket's going to cover a little bit. But do not put it together yet. Okay, 
So here's how you assemble this into the book, because you can't, um, in this method, you can't do it any other way. So on my binding strip, I've already put score tape on both sides, and what you want to do is, I'm going to have my envelope, my pages going like this. Okay, so it's going to be, the pocket's going to be here, it's going to go like this. So you want to take this, the, the page number uh, 10, and you want to go ahead and take the backing off of that binding strip. I'm going to add a little bit of more of my glue stick just to give me a minute to be able to work it, move it, um, so it's not permanently attached. And then you can either do it like this and lay it down over top, or you can flip it this way. Let's do it that way. Um, I don't know which way is easier, to be honest. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna match it up there, just like that. And I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna open it back up to the way it should be. I'm gonna press it down. So now you got the back side, page number 10, attached into your covers. And then you want to take um, the backing off of the second part. And you probably didn't have to double do the tape like that, but I didn't feel like there was going to be any harm done. So I'm going to put a little bit there, and I'm going to put a little bit on my, my pocket there. So then you just want to line it up without going over that um, score mark there. I can't get over it. And then you kind of want to match up the edges, the side edges, and then you want to push. Give it a good push. It looks like I may have got it on a little crooked. That's awesome. Well, it is what it is, you guys. <laughs> I don't know if I can fix it. I think I'm probably just going to have to leave it. Okay, so it goes like that. Oh, that's going to bug me. Tag on it. Well, it's a good thing I'm not selling it. Because it would bug me and I think I'd have to start over. I mean, I could do the heat gun trick, but that's two layers of tape. So, but anyway... So that's how you add your pages into your covers. Um, you need to do the same thing with the, with the tall envelope album. You have to assemble it inside the covers. You can't assemble it and then attach it into the covers. And I'll, get, I'll show you um, another video on that. Um, okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and prep the second page, and then I'll show you how I put that in there um, again. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got this other set ready, and I think I'm going to have them closing like this, like opening opposite each other. So I'm going to flip the book around and add it this way. So I'm going to take the backing off of here, and I'm going to add just a little bit of glue stick. Then I'm going to, maybe I'll do it this way, maybe it'll be um, straighter if I do it this way. Yeah, so I'm just going to line it up and then push it down and hope for the best. Yeah, it did pretty good. Oh, <laughs> when I made my covers, I got a little out of hand with my um, craft knife. Just showing you. Oh, my boo-boo there. I've always got to make a boo-boo besides the other boo-boo of that crookedness. Okay, so I'm going to take the backing off of this and the backing off of this. And a little bit of glue stick. And then I'm going to line this up all the way around and push it down. Okay, so now I've got both of my pages. I don't guess it matters which way right now. <laughs> Let's just keep turning it. I got both of my pages inside of the book. So that's pretty cool, right? That was easy. So now I want to show you how to do the, the matte um, envelope with the wrap on it and the mini square envelope. Okay, so I have all the parts here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is put 
the envelope together, the square envelope. We're going to attach the part two to part one. Whoa. And, oh, better put my glue on there. Just to give me a minute to adjust, and I'm going to go ahead and line it up. Everything's inked already. Ooh, it doesn't look like I cut it very well. Eh, not too bad. Everything is inked already, except for the back side, because you are not going to see that at all. So there is the envelope, and it's going to go right along here on the inside of the cover, just like this. But before we can attach that down, we need to take the wrap, which I have inked on both sides, um, and all we're going to do is we're just going to try to find um, the center. So when it folds around like this, um, when it folds around like this, the square envelope, the little mini square envelope, will go right on top, just like that. Okay? So I think I did a pretty good job. It looks like it. Let's just go ahead and push that down. It does not have to be perfect. Um, but the next thing you want to do, oh, let's put this one together real quick too. So I'm going to attach the bottom. Um, obviously, I cut it out, you guys, inked it where it needs to be inked, and then put tape over here, you know, scored it, and put tape over here. So I'm going to attach this bottom down, this bottom flap, just like that. Remove the backing, and close it up. Okay, so now that's ready to go. So what we want to do for this is we want to mat it before we attach it down to anything. So what I'm going to need is... Uh, page 10. I need this. I need the secondary mat. And if you wanted to, you could do um, the traceable template mat too before. But I think I'm just going to leave it black. Uh, I'm going to leave the wrap black. So I'm going to get me a piece of black cardstock. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it this way. I'm going to lay it down on my cardstock. And I'm going to trace it out. like this with a pencil and then actually I'm going to do two of them so I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and then trace it out again I guess really I need four can I get four out of one page no it doesn't look like it um, so I'm really going to cut out four but for now I'm just going to trace the two. So all I'm going to do is trim it out like that and then go right on top of that pencil line here like that. So then what we can do is we can mat the inside. Whoops. This paper looks like it's a little bit shorter when it should be the same. Oh well. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to mat it just like that. And I'm just going to use, you know what, I'm going to use liquid glue, I think, because it's going to be folding. If I can find it. What did I do with my Fabri-Tac? Yeah, there it is. I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac from Beacon, my favorite. Let me put the pencil on on the inside. And then I'm going to match it up here. Should be an eighth of an inch on each side. And it doesn't matter since that's not even. I guess my two card stocks are slightly different in lengths. Okay, I'm going to press that down. Just like 
like that. And then I'm going to go back and do my fold. Just like that. And you don't have to do it this way. Like in my mock-up here, I did cut that same piece. Where'd it go? I did cut it. I did kind of um, eyeball it and trim it down to size so that it didn't wrap all the way around. But um, I thought I would do it this way and to see, you know, which way I like the best. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing for the inside. And it gives me a minute to move it around. And also, in my mock-up, I don't think I did the inside. Oh, yeah, I did. I just didn't wrap it around. I just matted it. I was thinking I didn't there for a minute. Okay, so then I'm going to fold it again, give it another crease, okay so now we have something that looks like this, so then it's going to go into the envelope like this, whoops the envelope is going to go into, uh oh, did I grab the wrong envelope, well see you got to pay attention to that because if if you um, cut your envelope slightly different, you know, it's going to show. Plus, when you add the couple um, more, um, you know, thicknesses of cardstock, it's going to make it a little tighter. So, I'm thinking that looks pretty good, just like that. Let me go ahead and... So, it's going to go like this, and then this envelope is going to go on right there there. So, I think so I want it to be right in the middle. I'm just trying to judge it here real quick. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think what I'm going to do is carefully lay that down, grab my glue and I just moved it. <laughs> I'm going to put glue all on the inside here, just on the back panel, that's the longest part here. And then, I'm going to move it around until I think it's in the middle. Oh, my glue's erupting. Okay, so it looks like that. All right, that looks good. Look what happened to my glue. I'm trying to rush it too much. Okay, so this is going to go in here like this, right? And so this is going to go on top right here. Or maybe it should go this way. Which way should it go? I kind of like it opening like that. How to do my mock-up? Oh, I had it go in the same direction. Well, we'll do it like that then. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to put glue on this top flap right here. Um, I don't know how much to put on here, honestly. Let's see. I'm just going to do about an inch and, a, inch and a quarter on this top flap. Because now what I want to do is... Uh-oh. Y'all see me do that? I swear. So now I'm going to eyeball it and hope that I get in the center. I'm going to have to hold it up to where I can see it here. There. That looks good. So it looks like that. So it's attached to this part and I need to let it dry. <laughs> before I mess with it any further. So it's attached like that. Awesome. So then I'm going to turn it over like this and I'm going to put glue all on the back side here. Come on glue. And I'm going to be pretty generous with it because I really want it to stick. All right. 
I need to make sure I hold it the right way. <laughs> so it's going to go on like that. Okay. So then we just want to stick it on there. There should be about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Looks good. Doesn't look like I inked that very well. Or that one. I know I did. Alright, so I'm going I'm to open this up a little bit and really give it a good push down. Okay, so what I'm going to put here is a Velcro closure, but I can't do it yet because I need to mat um, the back side of there. But that's, that's basically how you do that wrap. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other one prepped and ready for back here, and then I'll be back. A quick reminder, I forgot to mention this, but when you're cutting this wrap out, if you can see there, it doesn't go all the way to the end, but you need to cut it, trim it all the way to the end. You need that extra little bit. You need all that little, little bit of room on each end that you can get. So don't trim those little slices off because they're use, more useful on than off. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me finish this up and I'll be right back. All right, so then I have these leftover corner pockets that, um, diagonal pockets that come with the mini square envelope. So I decided I'm going to modify this to make a corner pocket for the back side of my square envelopes. So what I decided to do was, since I've already attached this in here, I can't really use this as a template. So I made page number 10 um, into, I made a base template for page number 10. So all I'm going to do is, since I know this is the, you know, the, the base template is the white one there, I'm just going to lay it right here, right here on the, um, on the print, or on the, uh, what is this called? <laughs> on this cardstock, just like this, I'm going to match this bottom corner up. And now you could cut it two different ways. If you wanted to, you could do like a straight line, you know, right there and right here. Um, so that when you cut it, it would be just a smaller pocket up here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm literally going to cut it from diagonal to diagonal. So I'm just going to mark it like that, and then, whoops, um, I'm going to get my paper trimmer. And if I haven't said this already, this is a Fiskars Heavy Duty Rotary Precision Paper Trimmer. So then I'm just going to mark those, I'm going to match those uh, little hashes, hash marks that I made from corner to corner. And I'm just going to slice. So, so first, for example, I know this is going to be going this way, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of diagonal. So now it should, whoa, if I wanted a pocket on the back side of this envelope, it should fit just perfect. So let me go ahead and finish trimming this out, and then I'm going to score these two lines, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the tape on the back, and I've scored it and inked it. Now I'm going to check it to see if it fits and how well it fits, and if I need to do a little bit of trimming. And it looks like I need to trim the little points off the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to do that just real quick, just a little snip, nothing fancy. And then that should, that should fit just right. And it does. So now I've got me a little corner pocket right there. All right, so now I'm going to attach this down. I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off. And let me get some glue stick on there. Okay, so now I'm just going to try to match it up as best I can. Yeah, just like that. So now I've got that little corner pocket behind my envelope. I love it. Okay, so I went ahead and prepared the other one. Right. And I'm on, whoa. Didn't match that one up very good. Okay. 
There we go. Just like that. Okay, so the inserts for the square envelopes and the mini square envelopes are actually the secondary mats for them. So the way you need to do that is get your secondary mat. And since this black cardstock is so soft, I'm flipping mine over this way so I don't rip it. Um, not all cardstocks are like that, but for whatever reason, this black cardstock is very soft. And then, um, then you want to take the other part of that and you want to butt it right on up to it just like that and trace around it. You don't have to put this part in if you don't want to but I like it. So then when you cut it out you need to leave it as a hole. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this one out too on this side just so I can go ahead and cut them both out at the same time. So I need two of the minis, and then I need one, two, three, four, five, six of the larger ones, because I'm going to use this as the insert for the diagonal pocket we made. Okay, so then I'm just going to trim these out. Watch my scissors. I'll just use my scissors. I'm just going to trim them out. I'll just use my scissors and... I'm going to have to erase that pencil line because I should actually be cutting on the inside of it, but for some reason I'm cutting on the outside of it today. I don't know why. Let's see if I can get rid of it a little bit more. It's not going to be that big a deal. So then what you want to do is, you, as you, because you left it whole, you see that pencil mark? Take it over to your scoreboard and score on that pencil mark right there so when it folds down it looks like this. So this is the insert and it's also the secondary mat. So, you know, you can make, um, you can go ahead and make your secondary mats at the same time you're making your inserts too. So this one's already put in, I put, already put an insert in there uh, for this one. Um, so we're going to do the same thing with the big one and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the big one. Um, I've already made enough to go inside everything, um, but I'm also, I also made um, a couple to go into that pocket. Um, do they all have oh, another? So I've made one for each one of these square envelopes. Just like that. I like it. I think it looks cool. Yeah, I've already put them in the other pockets, and this little mini square envelope has its insert as well. Okay, so I think that'll be it for this video. Um, I think it might get too, too long. So in the next video, I think what we'll do is we will do the secondary mats and then we'll get the pretty pattern paper out and cut and ready to go and then uh, maybe even depends on how long that takes maybe even do the covers um, do embellishing of the covers I don't know we'll see I might be getting ahead of myself if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and um, leave me a comment below and tell me what you think and I will see you next time bye